Good afternoon, Dr. Bob from Springfield, Illinois again, I'm pastor of Living Water Church. I just wanted to share a few uh, thoughts with you in regards to the scriptures and what uh, scriptures really have to say about our beginning of uh, salvations and you know how Jesus uh, worked such a mighty miracle when he came forth from the grave. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about forgiveness today and how important that is within each one of our lives. You know, the Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians that, you know, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, behold, all things are new. And the reason that they're new is because Jesus has forgiven us and given us a brand new start on life again. And, uh, you know, there's several scriptures that talk about the aspects of forgiveness uh, in, in the Word of God. You know, I'm reminded as I look back even at the uh, aspect of, of uh, Moses, when Moses uh, fl uh, fled Egypt after he had killed somebody. And, you know, it was simply, simply stated, you know, <laughs> Moses was not acting, you know, according to the will of God, but he, he was also acting outside of his authority that he would have, even though he was, quote-unquote, a son of the pharaohs. And so Moses, you know, he, he fled. He fled into the wilderness 40 years. You know, he was gone for 40 years uh, uh, out in the wilderness. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know probably what was going through his heart and his mind, you know, about the things that had occurred and the things that had, done, had been done. But uh, I do know that Moses, uh, his, he spent those 40 years and God had tenderized his heart to the extent that he was able to speak to Moses and Moses was able to hear and respond. And, uh, you know, the, ask, the whole understanding of being able to respond to the forgiveness of God is such a powerful thing for each and every one of us uh, that, uh, you know, oftentimes we look at things and we say, you know, in our own spirit, in our own heart, in our own spirit, we say that, you know, we could never be forgiven of something that we did. And, uh, you know, the thing I've determined about God is God is a lover. He loves man. He said, I love you with an everlasting love, and I've drawn you with my loving kindness. And so God uh, is the one who loves us greatly. You know, that's why Jesus came, you know, to save us from our sins. And uh, to save us from our sins, not just, to, you know, to draw us out, but to put the forgiveness of God uh, within our life where we can, uh, can once again be those people who are uh, useful and, and helpful in all that the gospel has for us. And I think about uh, that uh, time Moses was up there and, uh, of course, the, you know, the burning bush uh, situation and, and Moses was wanting to draw near, but God said, hey, you know, this place is holy ground. Take your shoes off and uh, we'll, we'll uh, allow you to come in. And so God uh, ministered uh, to Moses in such a deep, deep way. And God was talking to him about sending him back uh, to uh, bring out those people that were his brothers and sisters, the, the people of Israel. And uh, Moses had a lot of excuses. Well, I can't, you know, I can't speak well. And, and uh, you know, what if they won't accept me and all those things? You know, those are all things that each one of us face every day. You know, am I going to? be accepted in this or, you know, rejected again, uh, you know, so we have to stand up uh, for what for what God has done for us and believe his promises. I believe that, he, you know, the, the healing power of forgiveness is such a supernatural thing. You know, there's the old statement that goes, you know, to err is human, but to forgive is divine. And certainly, um, you know, without the presence and, and the power of God working in us and through that gift of the Holy Spirit working within us, you and I have uh, not a lot of great ability to uh, ask for forgiveness and to repent. But repent repentance is a gift. And I say that, you know, each, each and every day, you know, I pray prayers of repentance over myself because, you know, I recognize that I don't always do everything just exactly uh, correct. I'm not out there, you know, doing corrupt things, you know, in the world, but you know, all of us have those uh, times in our lives, you know, when we need to uh, ask God to forgive us. And uh, I think it's important you know, for each one of us to not only ask him for forgiveness, but to receive that forgiveness that he gives to us. Each and uh, every one of us have the ability to receive because of the power of Jesus and what he did. 
uh, you know, Jesus, uh, he didn't have to ask for forgiveness. He was a sinless man. You know, he walked the earth and, uh, you know, 33 and a half years, he did uh, did the will of God and worked the will of God. And he saw men and the, you know, the foibles and the fumbles of man. And, uh, but yet Jesus was a forgiver. And because of that, you know, we can be in Christ. If any man is in Christ, we are a new creation. Old things are passed away. So the things that were there in the past, you know, are, are done away with. You know, thinking about Peter, you know, Peter was, a, <laughs> let's face it, there were some things about Peter that he was a major mess up in his life. And, uh, you know, though he, he had all the right uh, desires to do things, he didn't always do everything just right. You know, Peter, when uh, Jesus was talking about all the disciples forgiving or forsaking him, uh, he he told them that they would all forsake him. And Peter, you know, he said, no, not me. I, I won't do it. You know, I won't, I'll die with you if I have to. In the book of Matthew, he told Jesus, I'll die with you if I have to. And uh, yet uh, we look at Peter and uh, how God spoke to him and said, that, you know, when uh, you're with me and, you know, the crow the crow's going to crow, the rooster's going to crow three times, you know. And Peter said, no, I, I won't do it. I won't forgive you. Even if I have to die, I, I won't. So, you know, men can make gr grand uh declarations and, and desire to do things just right but every one of us is susceptible to uh, being uh, tripped up at times by our own foolishness and uh, I thank God that you know he for, he is a forgiver and has forgiven me I, you know I know for sure that uh, that uh, I've been forgiven and, and I thank God for that the freedom of it is just so awesome and so wonderful but you know what happened with Peter is uh, he failed he failed himself and he, he failed Christ. Actually, he did fail Christ, but Peter uh, took the weight of that upon his life. And, he, and the Bible says that when he, he uh, had denied Jesus, and the third time that he denied Jesus, the Scripture says that uh, he, Jesus looked at him, and Peter ran out and wept bitterly. And uh, he knew that he had failed the Lord. He knew that... He had failed in all that he said that he would do, and, and he thought his future was now uh, gone, and that he, he had no opportunity to be accepted by Jesus and what uh, Jesus had for him in his life. But, uh, beloved, Jesus is the forgiver, and uh, I believe that Jesus doesn't hold things against us like we hold things against ourselves at times. You know, we're, we're, we're of that sort that... Uh, and when we mess up, you know, we just, we can't go back that way. I can't go back and see those people again. I can't, you know, do the things that I need to do and want to do. And uh, I know that what God does is, is he demonstrates himself through other men, and through mankind, how he forgives, forgives us. And, you know, I'm thinking, uh, reminded of the, the prodigal son. You know, he, he wanted, he's, his, him and his brother, you know, were the only two sons and his dad uh, had a lot of money, and uh, he he saw that as his inheritance. You know, just let me share this with you for a moment, please. Uh, if you have parents or someone who has uh, a lot of money, remember this, that while they live, that's theirs. It's not your inheritance. It's theirs to do with it as they please. And so the Father, you know, he is the one who uh, forgives us and sets us right. And so this this young man, he wanted his money and he wanted to go his way and to, and to do his thing. And so the Bible says that he went out and spent his money in uh, prodigal living. You know, prodigal being, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, he lived foolishly and uh, he, he was a partier. You know, he partied hard all the time and who knows, you know, to the extent of what he did. But one thing we do know for sure, the Word of God says that he found himself hungry and he would have eaten eaten the stuff that he was feeding to the pigs uh, if he could. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he came to his senses. And uh, when he came to his senses, he knew where forgiveness was. He just didn't know the level of forgiveness that there was at that place where he could go to get forgiveness. I think we're all that way. We know where to go for forgiveness. We know that Jesus is a forgiver. He spent time on the cross to wash away our sins so he can forgive us freely and we don't have to, uh, you and I don't have to carry the guilt of the things that we do wrong within our lives. Now, sometimes we may have to make up for some things that we did, you know, and uh, we have to pay a price. 
But the truth is, you know, God is a forgiver. So this young boy, young man, I believe, you know, he, he was going to go back to his father and he had it all arranged, what he was going to say, and, you know, how he was going to get there and, you know, how he was going to try to get back into his father's good graces. And uh, so when uh, he, he was coming down the road and his father just happened to be out there and he looked up and he saw him and he recognized him instantly. And uh, he gave the servant some instructions about it and he, he ran to him and ran to him and, and went to him and, and uh, threw his arms around him. And this young boy was saying, Father, you know, I've sinned, you know, I, but, you know, please take me, you know, I'll, I'll work for you. And his father said, no, no, this is my son. He was, he was lost and now he's found. And, uh, you know, he was dead and now he's alive. And uh, let's go ahead and kill the fatted calf and, and let's have a celebration of him, and uh, he brought the young man back into the goodness of his grace, and uh, that's what God does for us. You know, God is gracious. Not grace is grace. God expects forgiveness, repentance, but the truth is, you know, we have to have genuine repentance, not just well, I'm glad I got got away with that, you know, and God will forgive me again another time. Listen, we have to be careful. God, God can't be played, and so we have to understand that God is. Uh, working on our behalf he's working on our he's on our side he's he's a forgiver and he brings us into the the goodness of his grace and the realms of his glory and uh, so we find out with god that failure isn't fatal you know god is a forgiver and because he's a forgiver he brings us back into the good graces and sets us up to have an ability to come again you know i have a friend uh, had a friend he's passed away now and uh he committed a, a, a very gross sin. And, uh, you know, I was uh, with him before he'd, he'd fallen off the edge, and we were talking one morning, and uh, he was telling me about some things that were in his heart, and I said, you know, this is not good. This is not good for you. It's, it's you know, you're not going to be happy when this manifests itself. And he said, well, I just want to be happy. I said, this is not going to make you happy. This is going to destroy you and destroy your family. And uh, he, so he went on his way, and uh, he did what, uh, you know, I begged him not to. And uh, so, you know, I prayed for him constantly, and I'd see him out in the, in, at times, you know, at the mall, you know, at the different places and stuff, you know, and there he'd be. And so he'd give me an opportunity to talk to him, but it was several years. Uh, and then one day we had first started our church over on Normandy Road in Springfield with Living Water Church. And uh, I'd invited him, and we'd invited him several times. Several times he came. Uh, or he didn't come, but several times we invited him to come. And so what happened was one Sunday, I was standing up uh, at the pulpit, and uh, it was during worship, worship was almost over, and I looked out the window of the building that we were in, and there he was, pulling his car into the parking lot. Him and his daughter got out, and they started to come in, and we had a greeter at the door to meet them. And when he stepped his foot across the uh, threshold of that uh, church in that, that day, he stepped across the threshold. What happened to him was he fell to the floor and began to cry out to God and ask him for forgiveness. And I uh, wish you could hear him all over the building. Uh, he was crying out to God. So we, we in fact, uh, spent some time praying with him and, and asking God to forgive him and asking him, God to help him forgive himself for what he'd done. He couldn't go back, but he could uh, make amends and uh, ask God uh, to help him make get forgiven by his family. So I don't know if he ever got everything fully straightened out there at the family. I do know this much, though, that, that uh, he passed away a couple of years after that. It wasn't long after that he passed away. And uh, his family invited us, you know, and asked us to to uh, do the service for him and to, to do the funeral for him, and we did. And I got to talk to them some, and you know, you could see the hurt that was still in them, but I, I felt like the bitterness was gone from the family. You know, I know this much that God can take away bitterness from our life. You know, Christ is our future. You know, if any man's in Christ, you know, we have uh, all good things that are really ready for us to, to, uh, to step into as Christ uh, draws us near to him. And, uh, but, you know, the forgiveness that he gives us is supernatural. You know, it's not just a, oh, yeah, I forgive you, you know, and then the next thing, you know, we, you know, we, 
we didn't we didn't really we forgave people in words, but we didn't forgive them in heart. You know, and God God wants us to to be able to forgive people in heart, to release them from that. Because the Lord said it himself. He said, if you don't forgive them, you know, how can I forgive you? And so, uh, you know, we want to walk with that uh, fullness of what Jesus has for us. You know, Peter, uh, when he uh, cried out and ran out of that place where Jesus was, he knew that he had, he had done something terrible and uh, denied the Lord. You know, I pray that you won't be someone who denies the Lord. You know, all of us, you know, have to stand up in times and seasons uh, to, to what might be an embarrassing situation or what might be uh, uh, something that, uh, you know, we're, we're at risk in our lives. But with this, I know this much, that Jesus will watch over us and we're his. You know, all our days are in his hands and that uh, no matter what, you know, I'm with, I'm with him. And so because I... I He's with me, and I'm with him. And because of that, you know, Jesus, I know, will watch over me. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have to, I have to uh, stand up for what is right. And uh, I think you do the same thing. You have to stand up for what is right. And Jesus will help you, you know. And it's amazing how people will come back and look and seek for forgiveness. You know, Moses, when he went back uh, to, the, to the Egyptians, they thought he was nothing. <laughs> They thought their power was more than his, but they were soon to find out a, a great lesson about the God of heaven and earth. When God sends you, he goes with you, and uh, he'll be with you and help you in all these uh, things that happen. You know, uh, Peter and, and his uh, friends, you know, Peter was uh, after the resurrection, and uh, he was with uh, six other men. You know, and one day he, he was so down in the dumps, he did not really reconcile with Jesus yet and he was so down in the dumps he says you know I'm going fishing and you know I guess if you don't know what else to do go fishing but <laughs> I'm not a fisherman so I don't know but the, the facts are Jesus uh, had Peter had, had Peter on his mind and in his eye you know and, and told the disciples you know in the book of Luke he said you know go go meet me in Galilee and bring bring Peter with you you know he specifically mentioned Peter and I'm sure that they had, when they went to Peter and said to him, hey, Jesus told us to come to Galilee, you know, to meet him there. That's what he's told us before, so we, we need to get on over there. And besides all that, Jesus specifically said to bring you with us. And I, I know that that probably did something in Peter's heart. I know it had to change something in his life. You know, he'd been weeping bitterly because of what he had done uh, in, against Jesus. But he found out that Jesus wasn't against him. Jesus was for him and told him to, to bring Peter. And, uh, you know, as he, Peter uh, received that forgiveness from Jesus, as Jesus spoke, and it took, you know, the, they were out there fishing all night. And, uh, and uh, as they were fishing, you know, the next morning, they, they didn't catch anything. And they saw Jesus standing on the shore. And, you know, John says, it's the Lord. Peter threw himself out of the boat backwards. You know, he was, you know, he was, I don't know what he knew to, how he even knew to react. And uh, so anyway, when he did, uh, Jesus spoke with him. And, uh, you know, when he talked, when Jesus was calling for those who were in the boat, he said, hey, have you, you, children, have you got any meat? Did you catch any fish? You know, and they were like a lot of other people that were out all night that didn't catch any fish. They went, no, we didn't catch any. And Jesus said, well, put your uh, net out on the right side. Put it on the other side, on the right side. You know, if you put your net on the right side, Jesus is going to help you catch fish. Now, I'm not just talking about fish, and you know that. But the truth is, Jesus will be with you, and he'll help you in all the ways. And so he spoke with Peter, and he said, you know, Peter, you know, three times, you, you love me more than you do these, you know. And you know, different debate has gone on about that. Well, it was the fish he was talking about, the other man, or, you know, whatever it was. Uh, the truth is, uh, Jesus wants us to be number one in our lives, always. If you'll put Jesus number one in your life, you'll have a whole lot less uh, for, uh, repentance to do <laughs> than, than you normally do do. And uh, I suggest, you know, that you as a person, you know, the truth is you're clothed in flesh so you know there are things that you need to get straightened out with other people and uh, you know I know a lot of people that uh, you know they they have 
problems with the relatives. And they're looking for different things, you know, with the relatives to find fault with and all that, you know, and there's seems like there's very, a lack of forgiveness between their families. And, you know, even their used to be friends, you know, you can talk to somebody and they'll begin to say, you know, they, you know, I was with so-and-so that they might say something against that person. Don't stand up for that. Just say, well, my friend, you know, got something, you should probably get it straightened out with them. And ask, uh, tell them to be the ones who, who need to get their forgiveness on and get their forgiveness straightened out. So as we look at what restoration uh, does for us, you know, in the presence of Jesus, you know, it's a glorious thing that God has helped us with to, to find forgiveness and to forgive others. You know, I've said it this way, and I believe it's true. I'd a whole lot rather have a friend than an enemy any day. And uh, I know that what happens to me is, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I'm like you. You know, I've got a mind, and I think, boy, what they meant by that? You know, and sometimes we'll let things happen. We'll let things grow in our life, and we need to get that out of our heart and get the forgiveness that God wants with. I want to tell you what, a person that walks in forgiveness is going to be a very blessed person. You're going to be able to receive a whole lot more things uh, from God and from others in your life than those who walk around with a big chip on their shoulder all the time. You know, I, I know that uh, every one of us have had things that people have done to us that they've done wrong in our life. They've done wrong to us. And, uh, but the truth is, you know, we have to let those things go and give them over to God because I know that God knows how to work on people to bring things around. Several years ago, Pastor Pam and I uh, had a situation that involved with the church and stuff. And, and uh, we had... Uh, Oddly enough, uh, on the New Year's, we'd gotten an uh, invitation to uh, the pastor, the, the person that was involved in that. You know, and, and we were, you know, we, we didn't, we weren't holding anything against anybody. You know, we were too busy, you know, doing what God told us to do than to, to be sitting around thinking about what other people have done to us. So uh, this person invited us to come to their celebration. And, of course, we had a celebration that that night before and they said well you know we've got uh, something of our own going he said well if I move the time up uh, and we got a little earlier would that work for you and I said you know what well, we have to go we have to go there and uh, we we'll, can be late at our own service but we need to go so Pastor Pam and I went and uh, you know there was some friends that we hadn't seen for a while you know and it was great being there and and this, uh, this man made a public declaration how he had sinned against us. And uh, I, I felt so humbled by that. But I thought, you know what, God, there's a man that's going to succeed. Even through hardship, he'll, he'll succeed in life. And so uh, I just believe that what God meant for us to do was to walk in the truth and love that he has given to us. You know, God's a lover. And if we're going to be on his side, we got to love people. And uh, we have to love more people than we have than we love our own pride. You know, pride is something that will hold you back from uh, getting forgiveness and forgiving others. But if you release that pride, you know, God will God will minister to you. That was one of the things I think that was wrong with Moses. Moses thought he could do anything, so he kills somebody and buries them, and somebody sees it, and boom! The next thing you know, it's forty years later before he has an opportunity to talk with God again. And, uh, you know, that mount that he was on, Mount Horeb, that was the mountain of God. That's where the temple of God uh, it was. And that's where Jesus' foot is going to come down and touch upon when he returns. And so uh, it was definitely holy ground. And Moses needed to get himself straightened out with God and straightened out with uh, the people. So the truth is, I believe that he did. He asked God to touch him and minister to him. And uh, so for you, friend... Here we are. It's past, the, it's past the time of the crucifixion. The resurrection has uh, already happened. And there's this season right now where Jesus is setting things straight with people. You can see it in the Word of God. And I believe that right now in our lives, there's, we're in a season of Jesus setting things straight. You know, we've got this uh, COVID-19 virus that's, uh, that's around. Beloved, we've got to have faith to overcome this thing. And I know this much, we can have all the intellect we want, but we, we need the faith from God Almighty to be able to overcome this thing and to do the things that we want to do. And looking forward, you know, I don't know how our government's going to rise 
and what they're going to do, but I do know this much. They need our prayers. And because they need our prayers, you and I ought to be praying for our leaders of our government, President Trump and all the government uh, people that are involved in there. And somebody said, well, I don't like this one. They're Democrat. They're Republican. Forget all that nonsense and find out who's for God and then uh, begin to pray and seek God's face. You know, we need the hand of God. We need the mercy of God upon our nation. Living. And uh, I know Living Water Church, uh, uh, we've been praying for our, our, our leaders and those who are in charge. We are asking God to help them, to give them wisdom, get them, to give them understanding, and to know for sure that uh, we've got to get these the churches open back up again. We have to get the people of faith in action. And some of us are just, you know, you know some are just sitting around, you know, wondering when, when things are going to get to the point where I can go out and go for a walk. Listen, now's the time for us to seek God and to have Him open up the windows of heaven over our lives. So you covenant with me, I'll covenant with you, and we're going to pray and ask God. Let's do that now. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are our healer. That's what you said. You said you sent your word and you healed us. And Lord, we even see these things that are happening now across our nation. Our, heal our land, Lord. We're praying that, Pastor Pam and I, twice a day uh, with Unite uh, 714. We're asking God to minister into our land and to heal our land and to uh, begin to heal our people, Lord, and cause us, Lord Jesus, to once again have those things that uh, you have for us. Now open up the windows of heaven over our lives. Bring rain in the areas where drought is. God, we thank you for supernatural giftings that come. Lord, we give you praise for it. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you. And look forward to uh, speaking with you again.